Okay. Well, the last time you guys saw this truck, it was in the same exact spot, but it was about four months ago. So the grass was lush and, lush and green and uh, it's not grass, it's hay. But uh, um, regardless, the pasture was lush and green and the trees were lush and green. And now we're getting some color all over. Some of them are losing leaves. Got a little burn pile going over here. And uh, yeah, that's because it's October. And this video is to show you the final final product that is my 1967 international lodestar with a 1963 cree travel trailer body mounted to it and i'm going to show you the complete rig and specifically the odds and ends i've done to it since i filmed that last video four months ago since then we've stayed in it twice we've worked out a couple bugs and i think i've really to be honest with you I, i'm darn near ready to call this thing done there's even the odds and ends are really done so let's check it out so first things first before we go inside um and yes it's wet i just finished winterizing this so it is uh ready to be put away for the winter but uh i did these fender openings um the previous fender openings were a little bit bigger and i had like a rubber lip it's a really expensive setup those rubber lips are um but i didn't like it it was wavy because of the way the tin sits and uh I just didn't like it, so I had these cut out on a water jet, my local, um, my metal supplier supply company, and man, I should have done it first because it was cheaper than what the rubber lips were. Um, but it's just it's eighth inch aluminum. It's just rigid enough that it it keeps everything in line, um, and it made the opening a little smaller. It's nice and tight. It's not going anywhere, even though there's only those four lags going into the. Uh, the floor joist basically up there so that's that's new um and then the other big thing on the outside is stabilization i didn't have any stabilization installed when we used this both times and more recently i have done that so what i did was you know i thought about some fancy electric or hydraulic stabilizers and hmm, this sounds fun but it's a lot of work it's really unnecessary. I mean, honestly, we're going to use this like four or five times a year. I mean, maybe, okay, six, maybe six times a year on a, on a good year. Honestly, that's, that's not worth all that. So what I did buy was just some basic, uh, scissor jacks for RVs. And these are, uh, these are the heavier duty style. These are 7,500 pounds each. We're not trying to level with these, mind you. All we're doing is stabilizing. So we park the truck, we block it up if we need to under the tires, and then we run these down just like on a travel trailer, and it takes the rock out. And man, do they do a good job. It is rock freaking solid with these things down. So glad I went with the heavier duty. Um, and uh, yeah, they work great. Up here, I was able to flip flop the mounting brackets around and used existing holes, and they are pushing right on this bumper. This bumper is 316 steel channel. Um, that's a frame rail, basically, guys and uh, it's not going anywhere. So that was the perfect spot. Yes, you can see them, it's fine. You might not like it, but I like the nuts and bolts and the bits and pieces of a, of a rig to be visible. I like to see the moving parts, so I'm okay with that. So you can say I should have hidden it, blah, 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 but there's springs and an oil pan and a lot of stuff in the way. And then this is a low riding truck. So that was the good spot for me. And it sits uh, just a hair above where the front axle sits. So they're not gonna hang up on anything. Um, you can see the uh, fender on this side. We did the same thing. And then here's what we did with the stabilizers in the back. They are welded and braced. So they're braced by this crossbar for my, my light bar, but they actually ride, they, they're welded and, and push up on the old trailer frame itself. And then just use some C-channel there. That was the right size, bolted to it, um, nice and solid. Again, we're not trying to level with these. But man, it really takes the rock out. These are outboard just a little bit more. Because of the waste tank, I chose to go to the um, the trailer frame way back here as opposed to the truck frame because I really didn't have much room on the truck frame. And it would have had to have been way up right at the axle. So I figured why not get back here where we have uh, you know a little more stabilization capacity way at the back of the, of the rig. Um, got some new stickers, so... That's fun. 
um, give it that little kitschy kind of feel. It's a it's a retro camper. So the last thing we're looking on the outside is the diesel heater. So we did get that all plumbed. You can see I have a ball valve coming right off of my fuel tank, plumbed up. I did have to use a an inline 12 volt pump. So that's there, it feeds up under the camper. And then here's what I did for the exhaust, modified a, uh, a RV um, furnace exhaust, because um, it has a nice tube that goes up in, and then that's the exhaust sticking out. I'll take you inside, we'll show you the other part of that. And the fact that the interior is done. Okay, so let's climb in here. And yeah, without those stabilizers, she moves a little bit. It smells like antifreeze in here. Gee, I wonder why. Um, we uh, we finished the decor in here. So part of which was got us a fancy little mirror. Um, some hooks for towels and such. Yeah, there's pink antifreeze everywhere in there because it's been winterized. But we got all of the trim done. So everything's trimmed out. You can see the vents trimmed out. All of the floor is trimmed out. The door is trimmed out. The AC unit, the edge of the bed, we did something different with. And uh, yeah, it looks about 10 times more finished than it did and 10 times better than it did. I think that's about it that wasn't done. Oh, the cabinets. So if I pan you back here, you can see that yes, the cabinets are indeed, they've been repainted um, with a final coat. And we took away some of the white that was over here and over here and man, does that pop and does it look better. I love, I love, love, love what my wife, wife did with the floor pattern, the gold and green wallpaper, the black, the white, the wood paneling, man, it just works. It just plain works. All the gold trim, that sweet light she bought, picked out, um, she nailed it. I, I could not, if, if I could change something, I don't think I'd change a damn thing in this camper. So let me, uh, let me take you around. I can't get you out any farther, but let me just give you a pan here. To show you, there is the Vivor diesel heater. It vents to an existing vent on the outside. Um, it pulls some air from that thing too. There's the exhaust feeding through the outside wall. That's what keeps it from burning the thing down. There's the pump for the Vivor, fed by the 12 volt inline pump. So all the wiring's hidden there. There is our thermostat. And there, as the handy little label says, is the fuel pump switch. So you flip that on, and then you turn on the thermostat, set it to where you want. And there's our vent. And man, does it kick out some heat, too, let me just tell you. Last thing I'll show you, I'm certainly not going to hook them up, but uh, I did do a little... You see down there, we got some bistro lights. I intentionally bought 12-volt bistro lights. And um, what I did... Show you some pictures from the last truck show with them running, but um, you can see the little hook up there, and then on this side we had some hooks for the old uh, awning, and then I added these black hooks, and there's all black hooks on the other side, and that way everything 
can drape on those bistro lights. And then I just added a covered two prong, you know, little outlet there, flange outlet, and that's wired right to the battery. So we can just plug them in, um, unplug them when you want to turn them off, and it adds a really cool effect. And then that rug got a little, little fake grass rug for the outside, which you know it fits with, you know, the landscaping and the thing. It works. It just works. So, guys, that's about it. It is complete. Not that we won't have little tweaks we need to do, but uh, yeah, it's done for all intents and purposes. So I am going to get this thing parked. I'm gonna get the batteries pulled out, the house batteries pulled out of the camper so they can be on a tender all winter. And then I'm gonna put that cover, bought a cover for a, uh, a Class C RV and we're gonna see how well it fits. And we're gonna put that on it right now while it sits here for another month, month and a half. Um, keep the leaves and the and the pine needles off of it, and then here sometime in you know late November, early December, we'll put it in the barn at my shop at work, and uh, we will in fact put the cover back on it then, honestly, because uh, that way it won't get dusty all winter long. So that's all you'll see of it. Hope you guys enjoy the completed Lodestar camper. Y'all take care.